playing with power. Over the past few years, the Nintendo GameCube has quickly become one of the most beloved consoles for game collectors and Nintendo fans alike. I personally started collecting GameCube games back in 2010, and over the past 10 years I've accumulated quite the collection. I don't play these games as often as I'd like to, but from time to time I still pop in Super Mario Sunshine or Pikmin 2 and get myself a little dose of pure childhood nostalgia. So over the past few years, GameCube emulation has come a long way, unlocking the ability to play the system's expansive library on a compatible PC. But for me though, there is something missing from this experience. I've always been an advocate of playing games on their original hardware whenever possible. Not only will the game run as it was originally intended to, there's also something a little magical about playing something just the way I remembered it from when I was a kid. Unfortunately, there are some issues with this method. Over the past year, I've had to replace the disk drive on my main GameCube. I've had to resurface more disks than I can count, and I've come to the realization that at least one of my games, one of my favorite, the Legend of Zelda collection, is so damaged it will never play again. And don't even get me started on disk Disc rot, which if you've never heard of disc rot, look it up, you're in for a surprise, because at some point it's coming for all of our disc-based games. But thankfully, there are several options currently on the market that will extend the life of your beloved GameCube while giving it quality of life improvements that you never knew you needed. So without further ado, let's take a look at how you can build the ultimate Nintendo GameCube. Today we are looking at two pieces of hardware, the first one being a virtual disk drive called the GC Loader. Now full disclaimer, this product was given to us for review, but all of the opinions in this video are 100% my own. Now, as I mentioned before, disk drives fail. The more you use them, the more those moving parts wear out. Having a disk drive also means, you know, using disks to play your games, which can be slow and, depending on the condition of your disk, glitchy. Enter the GC Loader, the first of its kind virtual disk drive for Nintendo GameCube. The GC Loader physically installs inside the GameCube where the disk drive once sat, and it's surprisingly small. In fact, it's about the size of a credit card. It's incredibly crazy what they can fit on this small little board. But you do have to get your hands a bit dirty if you want to get this installed. There's no crazy things like soldering that you have to worry about, but you do need to disassemble your GameCube, which means you're going to need some special tools to do so. But after you get the screws out, you can pull the disk drive out and replace it with the GC loader. If you're looking for a full detailed look at how to do this, I have a link to the entire installation process down in the description below. Honestly, it's a pretty easy process, but if you are concerned about how you would do this, I would definitely recommend checking this out. Now, like I mentioned before, the GC Loader is essentially emulating the original disk drive for the Nintendo GameCube. So it's essentially tricking the GameCube into thinking that the SD card that's on this device is a disk drive. And because it's connected at the exact same port, the compatibility on this thing is as close to flawless as you can get. Now the GC Loader isn't just some magic piece of hardware that does everything for you, you actually need some software in order to get this to work too. That's where Swiss comes in. Swiss is a piece of homebrew magic for your GameCube that lets you run homebrew, significantly run better Game Boy Player software, and most importantly, run legal backups of your GameCube library. Okay, let's just get this out of the way right now. Yes, you can run unauthorized backups from the GC Loader. However, I do not condone this practice. Each and every game running on my GC Loader is a backup from my personal collection. Once again, Nintendo Wire does not support software piracy in any way, shape, or form. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's continue. Now, because the GC Loader is emulating a genuine GameCube disk drive, the compatibility is near one-to-one. -one. I've not encountered a single game so far that has given me any trouble whatsoever. In fact, games tend to actually load faster because there's no moving parts of a disk drive, so the benefits on this thing are absolutely overwhelming. 
The device supports a wide variety of memory card sizes, even supporting memory cards as big as one terabyte right now. So technically, if you own the entire North American GameCube collection, you could fit every game on one card. Now besides running your backups, I think my absolute favorite feature of the GC Loader is a piece of homebrew that you can load with Swiss. And it gives your original Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games some absolutely needed upgrades. Now I've been a Game Boy collector for a long time, and playing them on my GameCube often left something to be desired. Not to mention, even if you own a GameCube player for your GameCube, you have to track down a startup disc, which no one ever seems to have, and when they do, they're incredibly expensive. This is where GBI comes in. GBI stands for Game Boy Interface, and it fixes all of those issues. No more discs, no more shoddy upscaling. GBI offers a wide variety of scaling options, including some very nice one-to-one -one options for purists. You can swap out the aspect ratio, make custom borders, and change the resolution and frame rate to best suit your playstyle. If you own a Game Boy player and want to play some GBA or Game Boy Color games on the big screen, GBI is a must. So long story short, the GC Loader has been an absolutely flawless experience for me so far. Truly one of the easiest mods I've ever done and it adds a huge amount of value. Coming in at around 100 bucks though, you definitely want to consider how much GameCube you plan to play. But for diehard GameCube fans, this one is a no-brainer. So, now that we have our entire GameCube collection in one spot, how are you going to output those games to your fancy TV? Well, you have a few options. You might have seen some cheapo HDMI cables for GameCube floating around on Amazon, but let me tell you, these are not worth your while. At best, you're going to get some poorly upscaled messes. No progressive scan signals, really nothing fantastic. You could drop $250 plus on the official GameCube component cables, if your TV even supports component anymore, but those are hard to find and crazy expensive. But what if I told you there was a different way? A true digital signal utilizing the GameCube's own digital delivery system for around 150 bucks. It's true! The Eon GCHD Mark II is a plug-and-play HDMI adapter for your digital out-enabled GameCube. Now keep in mind, Nintendo removed the digital out port on later GameCube models, so make sure your system has this port on the back before you pick one of these things up. The Eon GCHD takes the raw digital signal from the GameCube and converts it to HDMI. This allows you to easily pass through the true 480p signal source directly to your TV. Unlike the official component cables, the Eon GCHD does everything. It does sound and video all with one cable. It's incredibly easy to set up, and it's an absolute godsend for playing your original hardware on modern displays. Now, 150 bucks might sound steep, and for many gamers, I'm sure it is. But like the GC Loader, it really adds some incredible quality of life updates to your aging system. The GC Loader and the Eon GCHD are really godsends for fans of retro hardware. While these products might be geared towards only the diehards, it is amazing that there are such an active group of programmers and designers that are keeping these old systems alive with hardware like this. If you're looking to breathe some life into your old systems, you can't go wrong with either of these products. But if you're looking for something more casual, there's definitely cheaper options for both of these. But if you want the best and you want it to last, I highly recommend both of these products. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll be back with more retro reviews coming up very soon. Wow.